What's up guys, it's Flamon from Flamon Miniatures and today I have for you a video tutorial about creating this kind of very basic bases. I know that most of you know how to make this kind of bases, but this video is created having in mind all the newbies in our hobby and they need to learn this basic knowledge somewhere. So I hope that this place, this somewhere will be here. But before we go to the tutorial, I would like to ask you to hit that subscribe button to don't miss the latest videos. And now let's go to the tutorial. Okay, so um, yeah, I will use bases from the box from my Mordor Orcs just to present to you how some bases are packed. I assume that 99 percent of you know how they are packed but I don't know I thought that maybe this will look good on a video so I will use a wooden glue toothpicks a cup a dirt a sand a milliput and electrostatic grass uh, that was quicker than I expected so yeah these are tools that I will use other than that I will also use a, a glue that is made for rubber rubber glue but this will appear later and this is milliput and as you can see uh, when we have bases for our miniatures we have holes in them so you can put your miniature because but first of all I, I take now uh, milliput for milliput is in two portions it is a putty that you need to mix up to make the process of hardening start um, and uh, you need to have uh, more or less equal amount of one and another and then you need to mix them so going back to the bases uh, as you know when you cut off your miniature from from a frame a miniature like Lord of the Rings Mordor Org, then you have a piece of plastic that is glued to his leg and allow you to put this piece of plastic into this hole and then the miniature is standing but I'm working in a bit different way so I need to get rid of this of this hole and I prefer to work with milliput for that and as you can see I'm sticking it uh, when the base is upside down and I'm pushing it forward with a tool and I'm working on a cutting mat because I don't want to destroy my desk and yeah th this is the movement that I just made as you can see I, I pushed it I pushed the milliput inside so it filled this entire hole and then ta -da, on the other side it looks flat nice and filled completely it's a very useful technique I, I do it always when I have a base with holes in them so yeah so they are now prepared and the best part is that you don't need to wait until this will dry out you can start working on the next things later okay so now I took the uh, scalpel and as you can see I'm creating I'm cutting surface of the bases uh, thanks to this Mm, the glue will be able to stick into these holes and hold on the miniature much better than if I wouldn't do this uh, yeah it's very useful when you are gluing any kind of surface so yeah this is the wooden glue uh, it was mixed up it's non-toxic and it can be diluted with water and this what I'm using right now is is uh, is sand that I either found on some kind of construction site or I took it maybe from a children's playground I'm not sure because I used to take sand from both of these kind of places and yeah as you can see this one has uh, not only normal sand but also many uh, small rocks in them and I'm adding more and more uh, of this uh, sand until I have a consistency that looks more or less like this yeah 
this is uh, the good consistency. This is something that you should try to achieve. Similar consistency. Uh, so yeah, I took now paper and um, applying this mask that I just created on the on the first base, and I'm doing all of this on a piece of paper because later when I will apply more of the sand on the on this base it will be easier for me to get rid of the sand from my desk you will see this in a moment right now I'm trying to push um, the mixture of glue and sand to the edges of the of the base and yeah now I'm yeah too many rocks yeah still too many rocks yeah that's this is not the best sand I used to have better sand yeah, it's better to have something that don't have so many racks in them. But yeah, I got tired of it. So yeah, I just apply more of this sand on the base and it looks like that. So uh, now I will do it with another base. As you can see now, this horse that I cut with with the scalpel. Yeah, seriously, it, it it's really helpful because uh, wooden, wooden glue can with time start to get really dried out and separate itself from the base. So uh, if you make holes like this, it makes it stick to the to this holes. So it will, it is much better solution than just applying it on a flat. Uh, base. So yeah, I got tired, so I just applied these stones on the on the bases. Yeah, I I should I should look out for better better sand. This is not perfect. Uh, I'm going to to the seaside uh, tomorrow, so maybe I should take a jar of sand from from the sea. That would be most definitely better source of sand. And now the yeah, it was a total failure. Right now, I I tried to, as you can see, uh, remove the sand with with this paper, but I failed. Uh, okay, so yeah, now I'm using blue tack, but you can also use a substance called Patefix. I used to have it. Now I have blue tack. It's the same. It's it just uh, like uh, bubble gum. Can stick it to the things and uh, now I'm sticking it to cups and in order to have comfortable way of working with them not holding them in my hands holding in something bigger so now I'm using a um, Vallejo surface primer because I think it's uh, absolutely perfect primer and I have an old brush don't use your new normal brush for this work and as you can see, I'm simply applying paint with my brush because taking the airbrush would require me to clean it afterwards. And I always clean my airbrush very uh, precisely and it takes time and it, and it makes me don't want to do that again. So I rarely use my airbrush. So, uh, so if I can apply paint with just my a paintbrush then I will do it and this is what I'm doing now in the meantime I, I this is another day I let I let the glue dry out completely you need to have completely dried out glue for this step do not try to do it when it's still wet it will be a disaster and the sand and the glue will stick to your paintbrush and it will be just trash Okay, so now it's finally time for um, painting it. Uh, once again, another day passed by and the uh, paint, the black paint is dried out. So right now I'm applying chocolate brown or burnt amber on my wet palette. The thing is that I have these two paints and they are identical. So now I have an um, old brush that has uh, wider hair and I'm dry brushing this base as you can see I'm removing paint only on my wet palette 
because uh, this is the step when I need to paint the entire surface with brown but if I will have black color somewhere in concave areas that would be cool so it's like a, just a really sloppy job to do and well it, it's not the most I mean every step is important but it's not the fine moment for the, for the bases so I just uh, paint them quickly with whoa whoa this is really quick with this semi dry brush technique this is 400 times speed of my work sometimes I will present I presented you uh, the real speed of work I guess you noticed when it was I hope so so this is flat earth and I'm mixing it with white paint because I want to have a bit brighter color than flat earth of course uh, in this step you can use any kind of paints the whole thing is that to make in the next step uh, simply brighter uh, layers so now I removed most of the paint in a paper towel or yeah in this case it was like rather toilet paper so but the thing is that now I want to remove more of my paint and have a bit drier brush because now I want to create uh, feeling that there is uh, nothing the situation where some oh yeah this is 100 times speed this is the real speed of painting so I want this to to have spaces where earlier layer painted with chocolate brown is still visible so that's why I am now removing more of this paint on this let's call it paper paper towel it's more elegant this way uh, but in the next steps I will remove even more of the paint because I will want to leave less visible layer of paint to create this three dimensional effect. So yeah, I'm pretty delicate at this step, but in the next step I will have to be even more delicate. I will I will most definitely make a video about the dry brush technique in the future. But I guess it's pretty easy to understand. You just apply paint or your paint brush, then you remove most of it on a paper towel and then you are doing this with your miniature. I don't even know how to describe this process. I'm just doing this what you can see right now. I guess the video is right now wor worth more than a thousand words. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm making another layer on a few of them if the paint is not visible enough for my taste. Yeah, so of course you can use any colors. It all depends on... The whole thing is about just applying brighter and brighter colors with drier and drier brush. And now the brighter mixture for the new... Oh yeah, and you can see it starts to look like a like a base from from White Dwarf, White Dwarf like classical base. Of course, I'm pretty sure they didn't took their sand from a, a children's playground, but their effects were very similar and we can do it like this and it looks I think good I like it it's very classic look it's classy it's elegant it's simple it's perfect and this is a tutorial where you, you see how quick I make things it's not about creating a base that you will work on for many days this is finally something that you can do with your uh, normal miniatures when you are painting an entire army. 
it's actually a really quick process, it is. Okay, so now another mixture, this time much brighter. And this will be the last mixture, because we need the final highlights. So yeah, um, and now yeah, I'm removing more of this paint and I also, when I'm applying it on the base, now I'm trying to uh, be more gentle and yeah, this was again the real speed of painting and I'm trying to barely scratch the surface this time to just leave it on the most uh, convex uh, details on the tips of the of the stones and sand. So as you can see now I have this three dimensional effect and I and I feel very nostalgic because I didn't do anything like this in years and it really reminds me when I was a teenager and I worked on my Lord of the Rings miniatures. And this is a static grass. I don't... And this is the rubber glue that I mentioned to you before. So I'm using rubber glue because it's very sticky. And this is the ready static grass. Um, so I'm using the rubber glue because it's very sticky and it's very dense. Uh, so my... So it really gets in between and the... Uh, the sand, pieces of sand and rocks, and it really allows uh, and it really allows static grass to mm, get glued to it. So I, I'm applying it with a toothpick, just like I mentioned. Um, yeah, this is back when I was a teenager. We had only this kind of static grass, and yeah, and. I apply this like this. That that was the right way of applying it. Then you uh, hit the base with something uh, when it's upside down, and then thanks to that, the stat the pieces of the static grass start to uh, go up. Yep, once again, and as you can see now they look more. They are uh, vertical thanks to this. And it's and I was super impressed with this when I was a teenager, and I still like it. But now there are so many other uh, things that you can apply on your miniatures. But when you're working on dioramas, uh, dioramas, I'm pretty sure that you still use this kind of static grass. Yep, more. It's good to apply uh, it a few times, thanks to this then. Uh, the fibers are... Stick... More fibers are sticking to, to the grass. And yeah, and now, yeah, and this is why I'm using paper. It's then easy to remove the rest of my, of my static grass. And I made a few of them in different styles, as you can see. Um, I mean that by styles, I mean static grass styles. So now I have uh, static grass that is in, in pieces. Uh, I'm not sure how we, how we call this. And I will try to just glue it somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's not easy because the surface is very uneven. So it's, yeah, and it, yeah, I didn't try to remove it. It, it glued to my tweezers. No, it's not called tweezers. No, man. To my tool. Let's just stay with tool. Okay, look on uh, the close up. Yep, yeah, yeah, this wo this worked so much better. This is so much better. And now another one on the other side. Yes, because I think that three of them is like the perfect number. Three is always great. And now another color. Because there are more colors to these uh, static grasses these days. 
But you just need to remember that you need to place your miniature somewhere in here. And yeah, like I said, three is the perfect number. So now we have a, a four a bit different bases. This is the weirdest one, I guess. Uh, now the static grass seems very, very small. And in the later step, uh, I guess I didn't record it for some reason. I took tweezers and I cut off a bit of this static grass because it was actually too high for me. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, it's now it's, it's after trimming right now. I think it looks much better. So, yeah, as you can see, this is the way of making very classic looking uh, bases for miniatures, for basic base, for basic miniatures. So, uh, yeah, this should be, in my opinion, pretty easy to follow. Yeah, and you can, like I said, you can go to a playground, uh, to the seaside to get some sand and then you will have very big amount of this uh, very important tool for making for making bases okay so i hope you enjoyed this video tutorial thank you very much for watching uh, subscribe to it to my channel to don't miss the latest videos and see you on the next one bye